Have you ex ever experienced at your job a person who seems to do as little as possible and yet they get accolades, recognition, or just simply are not chastised for their lack of work ethic? Today we will look at Habakkuk's complaints to God about the evil that's seemingly going unchecked and God's responses to these complaints. Hi, I'm Pastor John Sonkrant from Heights Christian Church, and what we are doing as a congregation is going through the Bible in five years. We invite you to join us wherever you are by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Six days a week, we will read a small part of Scripture and pull just one thing out of the portion to help us be more like Jesus. Then on Sunday, our services will be online on this very channel, and our sermon will be over the material we read during the week. Today, we will, we will read the first two chapters of Habakkuk, where the prophet complains to God about the people who do evil and get away with it. I want you to pay close attention to God's response and His timing for the coming punishments of those who do wrong. Let's start. The prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. The Lord responds, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong, their horsemen come from afar. They fly like an eagle swooping to devour. They all come intent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They mock kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at all the fortified cities. By building earthen ramps, they capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on, guilty people whose own strength is their God. Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment. You, my rock, have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. When you do tolerate the treacherous, when then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? You have made people like fish in the sea, like the sea creatures they ha that have no ruler. The wicked foe pulls all of them up with hooks. He catches them in his net. He gathers them up in his dragnet, and so he rejoices and is glad. Therefore he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his dragnet. For by his net he lives in luxury and enjoys the choicest food. Is he to keep emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks to the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest. Because he is as greedy as the grave and like death is never satisfied, he gathers to himself all nations and takes captive all peoples. Will not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn, saying, Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion. How long must this go on? Will not your creditors arise, suddenly arise? 
Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their prey. Because you have plundered many nations, the peoples who are left will plunder you. For you have shed human blood, you have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Woe to him who builds his house by unjust gain, setting his nest on high to escape the clutches of ruin. You have plotted the ruin of my peoples, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds cities with blood, builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by injustice. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wineskin till they are drunk, so that he can gaze on their naked bodies. You will be filled with shame instead of glory. Now it is your turn. Drink and let the nakedness be exposed. The cup from the Lord's right hand is coming around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and your destruction of animals will terrify you. For you have shed human blood, you have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Of what value is an idol carved by craftsmen, or an image that teaches lies? For the one who makes it trust his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, come to life, or to lifeless stone, wake up. Can it give guidance? It is covered with gold and silver. There is no breath in it. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Did you catch what God says about the timing of the punishment? Let's reread chapter 2, verses 2 through 4. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. After the Lord tells Habakkuk this, he continues to tell of those who will receive punishment and the reasons for these punishments. I remember years ago I had a supervisor at work who didn't really like me. He made my life at work and after I left work very difficult. Suffice it to say that I never really thought he was a good supervisor and an even worse leader. But I never could get his bosses to see that. Many years later, I heard that he had been found out and relieved of his role as a supervisor. It was bad enough that he left there and went to work at another location in another part of the country. However, by the time I had heard of his demise as a supervisor, I really did not care and did not gloat. I had forgiven him of his transgressions by that time. When you follow Christ, forgiving the transgression of others is what he tells us to do in Matthew 6, 14 and 15. And let's read that real quick. For if you forgive other people they will, when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your fathers will not forgive you of your sins. It will take the Lord's timing to work through what we see as injustices. But trust Him to take care of it. It will be in His appointed time, and when that time comes, it will be swift. As we see throughout the prophets, God makes sure that people have time to be warned and repent. And our goal as Christians should be to tell people of the gospel of Christ so that they will have an opportunity to come to a relationship with Him before that appointed time. And I hope you received something from today's reading and devotional, and I hope to see you again tomorrow.